Yeah, actually, Davos is most diverse uh, because it brings all the leaders in all fields, including economic development field. And that's, that's the place where you also discuss what is happening in the global market, uh, in terms of the finance, in terms of the economy, and the trend where the economy is going. So it has its own, and, and in addition to that, you also meet practitioners, the business people who are actually in the field of production, which is very, very important, that complements uh, uh, our own analysis. And with that kind of interaction, then we get a very good uh, idea on where the global economy is going. And that's why we gain the expertise. That feeds back into our own planning process to know the direction of how the global economy is ex expected to grow, where the issues, the key issues are, whether it's in terms of financing, in terms of demand, in terms of supply, in terms of the how the whole market is shape, shaking, uh, I mean shaping up. So for us, we learn so much. It's not that this only the idea of this, but it's the people who go to Davos from all fields and with all the interactions, with all the conferences, then we get to, to get the ideas on how to deal with our own domestic issues as far as the economy is concerned. So it c there is a whole multiplicity of areas that are really uh, 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 where we learn so much uh, from what happens uh, globally. Right. Um, of course, uh, Rwanda now put in context, um, the global community is normally wowed at the pace at which uh, the country has managed to spread out its portfolio. But we'd like to hear from you what investment model you would noted works for you. We spoke with RDB and they mentioned 30% uh, shareholding, a mix of 30% in bank loan uh, equity and a lot more. But uh, is that replicable sector by sector or what works? Well, first of all, investment is done by government and also is done by private sector. And that's why our total investment of uh, um, investment to GDP ratio uh, always uh, now which is at 26 percent uh, we are targeting to have 30 percent but we want the private sector to be in the lead and government investment takes place through the normal budget uh, system but also what we have developed in terms of government is to see how we can come up with a PPP the public private partnership and that's why there is a law in place where the private sector can come in and have a joint venture with government. Then it means we are using less money, but also leveraging more of the private sector resources. And in addition to that, uh, we are also seeing that if private sector can go it alone, then that's very useful. Uh, where we have had a problem is on the risks that really go to the private sector. Where government is investing and is borrowing money, we also use government, we also use student guarantee. But the private sector faces a lot of problems, especially for some of the projects which need de-risking. And that's why the Compact with Africa program, which I've been engaging with uh, G20, has been very, very useful to see how they can help the private sector to de-risk those of the projects so the private sector can invest. And from for the question that you asked, when the private sector uh, borrows money, uh, definitely you cannot borrow 100%. There has to be a mixture of your own money and the money that you borrow to avoid the high cost. And the standard had been uh, usually 30% had been quite appropriate, and then you borrow 70%. But it depends on how much risk you want to take. Uh, in most cases, there are people who don't want to take much risk. If you can afford it, and depending also on the cost of money that you are borrowing, then you can even go to 50%. You can go to 40%, you can go to 50%, because you don't want to be, depending on the nature of the business on how much that return, that business brings in return. So here, what I can say is that the, uh, the problem would be taking too much risk by saying 10% or 20%. But, the ma but usually the normal situation is like 30% and also borrowing 70% that will bring the return to make it up, depending on the business you are doing. Right. Uh, speaking of investments, of course, one uh, sample, uh, one case study that will be taken to the global platform is Volkswagen, and we saw what happened uh, earlier this week. Um, they've mentioned that it's the first time they have this mobility solution, so it's a great move for both them and the African context. But in terms of price points and market segmentation, they are still not clear, and they mentioned that they will set the prices when they do the official launch. How much does the ministry intervene in terms of setting the price points, knowing very well that they still have their own a solid base for pricing that? No, these are the vehicles. Setting the price is a, is a private sector 
uh, venture, it's not government, and they are of course setting the prices to sell the vehicles. And then you know that the whole uh, purchase of vehicles is not only the government, but it's also the whole entire uh, private sector also purchasing vehicles. And they've been purchasing from everywhere. So depending on how attractive the pricing is, then people would prefer to buy them from here, especially when you are buying in local currencies. So the consumer is the one that is going to say, I like this or I don't like this. So it's not the government to go and set the price. If this is a private sector business, it's not a government business. Mm. Yes. Mm. So we are uh, waiting, if the price is quite good, then the consumers will go for it. Right, incentivization is the same sector by sector, but in terms of maybe making the uh, supply chain, maybe from the port or assembly here, uh, at uh, lowest price possible, what would the government be looking at in terms of options to make that retail or that wholesale par package as low? Actually, first of all, it's not the government business. This is a private sector business, which is done by a private sector person, targeting the entire population. So government, is, if it was government business, then you would go through the calculation and say, this will make sense. But what they are targeting is the consumers in the country, whoever has the money to buy a vehicle. And then the price will be very, very attractive compared to how you used to buy vehicles from outside and import them because they are not being produced here. If you add the foreign exchange, if you add the transportation, if you had the import tax, and then put together the whole final pr price, then you'd know exactly what is good for you. So government does not go and do the pricing for a private sector individual. The private sector is also investing here because the company is going to sell. And whoever is going to buy, it's anybody, including even public institutions. So that way it depends on the price. If you have a better alternative, then they'll say, oh, I go for this. If this is a better alternative, then it's their choice. So it's for the all the consumers in the country, and that's why the government does not go there to do the pricing for a private sector company. It's the private sector company that does the pricing. Yeah. Perfect. My final point now has to do with the World Bank rankings. Um, uh, we've noted that Rwanda does its own assessment, so we're not entirely dependent on the rankings. But of course, it plays into investors uh, from an outside uh, perspective. What changes uh, with the perception, perception-wise particularly, uh, ahead of uh, uh, the World Bank coming out and saying that there might have been some irregularities with some countries uh, being ranked? From the Rwandan perspective, what changes? No, nothing changes because, first of all, we have not got the facts. We know that, for example, the rankings have been helping us to improve in different areas and to improve in a better way. And that's why you see our uh, whole the ease of doing business. We are looking at areas where we are not doing very well, where we can improve, and whatever we have done very well, how can we also improve on that? And that's a good thing in terms of principle that we want to improve as we move forward because we want to grow our economy. Now our economy is coming up now, growing by 8%. Uh, uh, we are good and we want to sustain it above that. We are seeing the balance of payments declining by 21% if you look at our last figures, and also the, uh, the, e the economy, the exports growing by 43%, which is something very good. And we are seeing the balance of payments really, really being, uh, it, is ha it is helping us in terms of moving forward. It is helping us in terms of uh, all areas of making it easier for the business uh, uh, to flourish here in Rwanda, and on how we can, it can help us to improve the foreign direct investments, but at the same time, the domestic investment of the private sector. So for us, we look at it as a model that is helping us. And uh, uh, w we believe that we are also going to continue with it, whatever the changes, as long as it's a good change for us, we re very much appreciate it. What has been talked about, we don't have the facts. So we cannot even make a comment on that as Rwanda, but all we know is that it has been helping us, uh, that model from the World Bank. Because you get to know how other countries are doing, and then you go for those countries, what can we learn from those countries that are doing better, and where can we improve in terms of making it easy for the private sector to invest in Rwanda? Right. Uh, two large uh, topics will come out of uh, Davos, the fourth industrial revolution, which uh, is continues to be debunked, and uh, um, artificial intelligence. Now, we've seen some uh, the health sector has taken center stage for uh, with Babu uh, introducing AI and putting in millions of dollars. Uh, but uh, is there anything specific you'd be looking forward to within those two areas? No, actually, the whole thing, the whole idea is the changing of the world the way we used to know it. 
we are seeing the role of technology in the way we do business. We are seeing the role of technology in the sciences, we are seeing the role of technology in the financial sector, we are seeking the, uh, seeing the role of technology almost in everything. And that's why when you go there, we are saying, how is it this one technology helping us in education? How is this helping us in the health sector? How is it helping us in the financial sector, especially when you are going cashless and also other products that are coming on board? So we are seeing the role of technology helping and changing the way we live in a better way. And that's what we are going to say, what, is, what can we learn that is good for Rwanda? So we are going there open-minded, but knowing that we want to see the technology contributing the different areas that can help our economy, our services, our welfare grow better. Yeah, that's what we expect to learn and then see what can be implemented here that we don't have, where can we improve, and where can we learn, and who has what in terms of technology.